one of the fables that I wrote. Now, I wrote these a few years ago. When I was having a hard time in life, and I decided I really needed to be creative in order to lift my spirits. So I made six of them. Three of them have boy heroes, and three have girl heroes. So today, I'm going to read you the fable about the adolescent elephant and the ageless scarab, also known as the dung beetle queen. All right, so let me start you off with my fourth fable. This is a story about self-worth, self-esteem, passion, and perseverance. The adolescent elephant always followed the matriarchs of her herd with diligence and steadfastness. She keeps a close eye on what her mother's teacher. She's worked very hard trying to figure out as simply as possible what is worth her time and what is not worth her time. Deep down, she's very sensitive and worries about everything and everyone a lot. She found out very early on in life that if she eats the wrong kind of food, that she will get into trouble. This hasn't totally stopped Adolescent Elephant from seeking out what she likes. She takes good care of all the other baby elephants in the herd and does her best to keep the order of the herd peaceful. The adolescent elephant has a bad secret though. She likes to sneak off by herself and eat a certain kind of grass that her elders have forbidden her to eat. Adolescent elephant feels like she takes care of all the others and it's okay for her to have this naughty pleasure. So long as she doesn't get caught. Besides, who are they to tell her how she should feel and look? She feels old enough to judge right from wrong for herself. Her mother tells her, Baby, don't eat that grass. That grass will make you unhealthy and you will not look good for the bull boy elephant someday. The adolescent elephant doesn't care. She doesn't even really want the bull boy elephants to bug her. She's just happy with who she is right now at the moment. So why would she need to change for anyone or anything? Besides, she feels really good when she eats the special grass. That is, only in the moment she has it, but later afterwards when it's gone, not so much. One day, the adolescent elephant noticed her older sisters teasing the adolescent bull boy elephants. She wondered, why would they do that? Then, all of a sudden, one of the adolescent bull boys hit her sister with his trunk, and this made her upset. The adolescent elephant ran up to the boys and shouted at them, Stop hitting my sister, you bully! The three boy elephants started to laugh at her. What are you going to do, tell on us? One of them said. She felt so upset that she said nothing and attempted to hit one of the boys with her own trunk. But she missed, and the boys roared with laughter. You're just jealous, one of them said. Yeah, another one said. You just want us to hit you too, like your sister. But we wouldn't hit you because you eat bad grass, which makes you unattractive. And the adolescent elephant was so upset and hurt that he would say something like that, and she felt ashamed and angry at him for knowing and exposing her secret in front of everyone. So she ran away so that they wouldn't see her crying. She ran far away to a special water hole where the herd had been a week before. She knew that special grass she likes grew there and that she needed it now more than ever to make herself feel better. She found it and indulged to her heart's content. She ate so much of the forbidden grass that she became sleepy. She decided to take a short nap and after a few minutes, the adolescent elephant awoke to a strange sound. When she opened her eyes, there was this tiny little creature staring right in her face. This startled her, and she almost squashed the poor little being out of fear. Before this happened, the little bug shouted, Stop! What in the world are you doing? The adolescent elephant backed up in surprise. Listen to me, you big bully. I'm a great, powerful scarab queen. If you crush me now, it'll come back on you tenfold. The adolescent elephant felt offended as much as she was surprised. I'm not a bully, she said. I'm too little to be a bully. Besides, I'm a girl, and girls can't be bulls. Scarab Queen laughed. Ah, pooey, don't lie to me. Of course you can. Can you not imagine what you would have done to me? You could have killed me out of self selfish, petty fear when you're a hundred times my size. If that's not what bullies do, I must be a mighty elephant just like you, huh? The adolescent elephant felt so bad for not having realized this. She began to apologize to the Scarab Queen. I'm, I'm sorry, Scarab Queen. She began to cry again as she apologized, since she was so overwhelmed by all the emotional drama of the day. Why are you weeping like that, elephant? You're being silly. You almost killed me, and now you're the one who's crying? How sad. The adolescent elephant regained her composure enough to explain to the Scarab Queen what had happened to her that day. And the Scarab Queen listened patiently. The adolescent elephant told her everything, including her secret. 
When the adolescent elephant finished her justification, Scarab Queen spoke again. She said, Elephant, I can see now that you're a sensitive being like me. Imagine a little bug like me having pity for you. I really do empathize with you, though, and with your hard time today. But now you must hear my side of the story before I help you. You would help me, said the elephant? Yes, said the scarab. Let's make a deal, okay? I'll help you if you help me. You see, I'm an older queen who has seen many things. You elephants provide my people with our most special prize. The dung from your rear. Ew, that's gross, said the adolescent elephant. Now listen to me, elephant. One animal's waste is another animal's prize. Who do you think cleans up all that smelly stuff you creatures leave behind? And that grass you eat makes it extra smelly to us beetles, and we like it. The only problem I have is that you elephants do not respect us for all our hard work we do. You treat us like garbage if you even notice that we exist. We don't need praise, but if you can't recognize us, then you're liable just to kill us out of sheer ignorance. We mean nothing to you, and we work so hard in your shadow to take care of you. You see, this has to stop, elephant. You have to stop crushing my people out of greedy ignorance. The adolescent elephant felt so bad again for the scarab queen, she apologized. I want to help you, elephant, because I'm more powerful than you think. The scarab queen made a plan with the adolescent elephant to get back at the bully boys. The scarab queen flew on top of the adolescent elephant, and they both trekked back towards the elephant's herd. When they got there, the adolescent elephant saw the group of bully boy elephants. They saw her too, and began to laugh and point at her with their trunks. She let out a loud elephant trumpet sound and charged straight at them. Right before she was about to slam into them, she stopped. The bully boy elephants were startled and confused. All of a sudden, the scarab queen flew out from behind the adolescent elephant's ear, and the scarab queen flew straight into the bully boy's eyes, causing them to run. As they ran, the scarab queen flew into their ears, pinching them right where it hurts. And two of the boys ran off, except one who tripped over a log and fell onto his knees. The same bully boy who hit adolescent elephant's sister, and he began to cry. And he turned to Adolescent ele Elephant and said, Why? Why would you be so mean? A elephant was confused and upset by this statement. Why are you crying? You're the bully. You hit my sister and called me bad names. You're just a silly boy. Now you got what you deserve. I'm sorry, said the Elephant Boy, still crying. I thought that was what us boy elephants were supposed to do. I'm so confused. I thought you girls liked it when we hit you with our trunks. I guess I was just trying to be accepted and loved by the older boy, bull, bull boy elephants and the other boys, I'm so confused. And the adolescent elephant was still upset, but she had pity for the boy. The boy elephant began to speak again. Besides that, it was those gross little bugs who told us we should hit the girls if we liked them and wanted love and acceptance from the other elephants. It was those bugs for us. The adolescent elephant began to understand now what was going on. Those bugs, she said, are my friends. And you boys probably weren't listening to what they really wanted because you thought that they were just gross bugs whose feelings don't matter as much as yours. So they played a mean trick on you. Queen of the Bugs told me that we elephants need to stop ignoring them and crushing them, and they will stop scaring us and tricking us. So the boy elephant listened to her while he was still on the ground, and they made amends. And the boy elephant said all that he wanted was to fit in with the other elephants, and deep down he just wanted to be her friend. So she forgave him, and they both went to tell the rest of the elephants the hard work and plight of the Scarab Queen's people. After that day, the matriarch of the elephants the queen of the scarabs made peace. So long as they respected the work each other's people did to take care of the earth, the adolescent elephant decided that she would try to be more accountable for herself by eating healthier grasses so that she could be a big strong leader of the herd someday just like her mother's people and so that she could maintain the balance between what she wants for herself, what everyone wants from her. She decided also to be more mindful by paying attention to the little things in life so as not to ignore the feelings of others, pain and suffering whom she considered lesser than herself. It just gets everyone into more trouble than necessary, and it makes life more complicated than it needs to be. Scarab Queen went back to her colony, and they enjoyed working with the elephants without being disrespected, killed, and they stopped bugging the elephants who shared with them the responsibility of working to maintain a simple, kind, healthy world for all living things, big and small, to share together. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.